Hi guys, my name's Chase, and today I'm going to be telling you all about substrafing in Splatoon 3. If you've been somewhat involved in competitive Splatoon at any point, chances are that you may have heard of substrafing before. It's a technique that's been around since the very first game. There are numerous guides on how to substrafe all over the place, but I wanted to make a video where I give my own take on it. We'll get into it in just a second, but first, if you enjoy this guide and want to see more like it, don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing. Your guys' support goes a long way. So, substrafing. What is it exactly? Well, the best way to describe it is an advanced form of movement. Let me show you a very simple example of substrafing and why it can be so useful. So, right here, I'm swimming in a straight line, and I decide that I want to change up my direction really quickly. Simply moving my left stick in the opposite direction works, but your character will come to a complete stop, then have to pick up speed again when going in the other direction. Now, let's see how it looks with substrafing. As you can see, that's a heck of a lot faster. It may not seem like a huge deal to some more casual players, but trust me, the amount of time I gained here by substrafing can be the difference between winning and losing an engagement. Alright, so that's a basic example of what it looks like, but how do you do it? Well, it's called substrafing for a reason. To perform it, you'll pop out of your ink, hold down the sub weapon button, which is R, then dip back into the ink and swim in whatever direction you desire. Any direction works, and no momentum is required. I don't know why it works like this, but it's been this way ever since the first Splatoon game. Holding down the sub weapon button allows you to swim in whatever direction you please with no loss of speed. Next, let's talk about why you should substrafe. In many guides that I've seen on substrafing, they do a great job of explaining how substrafing works, but they don't really explain when you should apply it to your gameplay. So let's go over that. Well, the truth is, substrafing has a very wide scope of uses. It's not really good for just one or two things. It can help you out in many different situations. However, what I'll do for now is highlight what I think are its best use cases, from my experience. Number one, juking. Where I think substrafing really excels is by using it to juke or throw off your opponents in engagements. Take a look at this example. Right here, my opponent sees me swim to the left, so he anticipates that and moves there to finish me off. However, I quickly substrafe back in the other direction, and then swiftly move around the block to take him out. Here's another example. My opponent thinks he has me cornered here by pushing me into this narrow corridor. I give him the illusion that I'm swimming to the right, but I quickly substrafe back out and surprise him. This is primarily how I use substrafing, to catch people off guard. Number 2. Bait So this is something that I don't see as many people do, but from my experience, it works pretty well. Here's an example scenario. An opponent chases me down to the left tree, below this ledge. Rather than just standing or sitting still in my ink, I instead substrafe back and forth, making me a moving target. This accomplishes two things. One, it makes it really hard for my opponent to just stand up there and shoot down at me, since I'm moving all over the place. If they throw a bomb down at me, I'll also be able to swiftly avoid it. Two, if he decides to drop, I'll have the upper hand, since he's going to have to compensate and adjust his aim to try and lock onto me after falling. Plus, substrafing back and forth like this just gives you time to figure out your next course of action without being a sitting duck. If you watch pretty much any of my gameplay videos, you'll see me doing this constantly. Alright, so I know there's something that you're just dying to comment on this video. Chase, isn't substrafing pointless since squid rolls pretty much do the exact same thing? Well, yes and no. At a very basic level of understanding, yes, squid rolls can accomplish the same things that substrafing can. But what you need to keep in mind is that squid rolling requires a bit more out of you, and it also has a few drawbacks. The main issue with squid rolls is that they require momentum, whereas with substrafing, it requires no momentum at all. I can just freely go back and forth as I please. The other issue with squid rolls has to deal with the animation. Squid rolls are fantastic for movement, but in heated 1v1 scenarios, they can be detrimental. That period of time where you're airborne and the armor wears off leaves you extremely vulnerable, even if you're able to shoot during it. And speaking of the armor, it doesn't even function properly half of the time due to the game's poor netcode. 
A lot of times you'll get shot in the armor, the game will make the armor noise, but then you'll just die anyways. My point is, squid rolls can be unreliable. And while they can have great uses in close quarters fights, I think you should also have substrafing under your belt as well. So what weapons are substrafing good for? Is it useful on every weapon? Honestly, pretty much, yeah. Even weapons that you wouldn't expect, such as E-Leader or Hydra, still have uses for substrafing. Simply tricking your opponent on where you're going or quickly strafing to dodge a bomb can be the difference between a win and a loss. The only weapons that substrafing isn't as necessary on are shooter weapons, and there's one big reason for that. Shooters have the ability to do another technique, called main strafing. You see, with most weapons in the game, using substrafing to dip in and out of the ink is faster than just shooting your weapon and dipping back into the ink. Well, except for shooters. For some reason, shooters are able to dip in and out of the ink two frames faster than the rest of the weapon classes. So for them, it's actually faster to just shoot, dip back into the ink, then shoot again, as I'm doing here. But for the rest of the unprivileged weapons in the game, substrafing is the way to go. Now, don't get me wrong, main strafing still has its uses, for every weapon class. I'm not saying you should never do it. But for scenarios like I mentioned earlier in the video, you're definitely going to want to substrafe for those if you're not using a shooter. The final thing I want to cover is something that I see a lot of people struggle with, and that is, how do you incorporate substrafing into your muscle memory? Because while the concept of it is quite simple, it does take some getting used to. Well, I'm no expert on how to drill something into people's heads, but what I recommend doing is taking a day, or even just a few hours, where you spam substrafing everywhere. It doesn't even have to be ranked matches or anything, Turf War will be just fine. Just spam like no tomorrow. Obviously, you wouldn't use substrafing this much in an actual match, that would be crazy. But doing this does condition your brain into knowing that it's an option. This is what I did to learn it back in Splatoon 2. And after just a few sessions, I was substrafing pretty comfortably.